Okay. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. So I'm going to discuss uh, something about LISA and uh, how LISA can probe uh, particle physics. And I will, I will also discuss a bit uh, cosmology in general. So, and the results I will present are based on some work done uh, in collaboration with uh, the LISA Cosmology Working Group and uh, with other people that are not part of the LISA Cosmology Working Group and are people from Spain. So the first remark that I think it is important for this uh, community is that I'm going to, when, whenever I'm going to say early universe, I mean something that happened before uh, CMB or even uh, Big Bang nucleosynthesis. So I, I want to clarify that because, for instance, yesterday there was a slide with Redshift 9.6 early universe. So it's not my case now. First remark. Second remark is uh, the issue that what I want to stress that what we know about the early universe is uh, not much. Actually, we don't know much about uh, what happened before the uh, Big Bang nucleosynthesis. And actually, when we are speaking about the phenomena that happened before BVN nucleosynthesis, we are also speaking about something that is uh, strictly connected to particle physics. So for particle physics, now there is, you know, the LHC that is probing this area, the area at which the energy is uh, 100, 100 GV, electric scale. In the future, we will have a future, maybe we will have a future circular collider. So probing this area. So tight connection between cosmology, particle physics, and uh, in particular, now, also uh, gravitational waves. And the reason is, uh, okay, trivial a posteriori. The point is that uh, uh, now, for the first time, by means of detection of gravitational waves, we can uh, access the era of the universe that we, don't, we didn't know before, we couldn't access. Because whatever we know about the, the, the early universe is related to the fingerprint of what happened before CMB. But CMB is like a, a multi-dimensional picture, okay? It's just a slice here. But gravitational waves have the property that they interact very weakly with matter. So this means that uh, a gravitational wave produced here can travel basically freely till today without inter interacting. This means that the gravitational wave is carrying all the information about the source. And uh, by detecting gravitational waves now here, we can uh, reconstruct the, the source here. So, by general, for gravitational waves uh, from the early universe, what we expect is a stochastic gravitational wave background. And oh, we, we know, okay, that in principle we have a stochastic background coming from uh, uh, the early universe, but also from the late, late universe. What I call late universe is astrophysics. And because in general, if you have many sources and with a small uh, signal to noise ratio, you detect them as a superposition of sources that can be resolved individually. This means that for this reason they constitute a stochastic gravitational wave background. Oh, okay, I'm messing all the time with here, so I have to understand. So, um, in, in LISA, what we have is uh, we expect this kind of sources for astrophysical uh, stochastic background. Uh, we have the galactic binaries. Luckily, they are not in a, no, this, these sources are not isotropic because uh, they are in the galactic disk. So by the fact that LISA is moving during the year, we can remove part of this signal. And uh, we have what we call uh, uh, stellar origin black holes binary. Let's say what uh, LIGO and Virgo detected. Moreover, maybe, oh, it's a matter of evaluating detail because it, it really depends on the sensitivity of LISA, also in frequency. Uh, we have, we'll have also neutron stars and extreme mass ratio spirals constituting a stochastic background. Moreover, potential sources are inflationary processes, fine, cosmic strings, primordial black holes, because also primordial black holes can, uh, are, okay, first of all, they are tightly connected to inflation, and moreover, they also provide a stochastic background. Moreover, I don't know if you're familiar with, there is also super radiance. Uh, fine, it's the fact that you have, may, may have uh, a halo of particles that are not standard model, let's say axion, okay? And uh, at some point, uh, okay, it's like, uh, okay, it's too long to discuss. But basically, also this case is producing a stochastic background. And then uh, we have the cosmological first order phase transitions that I'm going to discuss in some detail now. So, uh, now if, uh, 
So just a brief reminder about uh, the first order phase transition. So, okay, the, the idea is simple. The point is that whenever you have a, co a cosmological first order phase transition, what you have is that at some point in the universe, you have a nucleation of bubbles. And these bubbles contain, uh, uh, you have a, a breaking of the, the symmetry that we are considering here. And uh, the bubbles containing the, the broken symmetry expand into the unbroken phase, okay? And when the bubbles collide, they produce a, a, a gravitational wave signal. So going into a bit more detail, uh, okay, going a bit, yeah, it's nice. Um, let's see, for instance, we have uh, a scalar field, typically the Higgs, and uh, at high temperature, we have that the, the, this, uh, poten the potential at finite temperature of this particle has uh, this shape. So the particle has no vacuum expectation value. At some point, you decrease the temperature, you see that the, the potential of this particle is changing. And at some point, you arrive at a configuration, the critical temperature, at which uh, uh, you have that this minimum is the gentle with this one. In this minimum, the, 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 the particle, the scalar, acquires no BEV, so it doesn't, doesn't break spontaneously the symmetry connected to, to it. And here, yes, it is. There is a BEV that is not vanishing, and the, the symmetry is broken. In particular, at lower temperature, the, the, called the a nucleation temperature, you have that you can have the tunneling. You go from this phase to this one by means of a tunneling on a thermal jump. So you have a formation of the first bubble, but then the, it is crucial to know if uh, after the formation of the first bubble, you have formation of other many bubbles, or only a few bubbles. And this is given by this quantity, beta, that is connected to the action of the tunneling. So just to keep in mind, beta here says how fast the minimum goes down with temperature, and it says if the phase transition uh, of course, by production of many, many, bu many bubbles or a few bubbles. Keep in mind that it's important that the observation that when two bubbles collide, they produce gravitational waves. This means that uh, in the case that you have uh, uh, many, 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 many bubbles, you will have many, 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 many collisions, which means that what you expect is high frequency of uh, uh, gravitational waves. The contrary, of course, if you have a few bubbles, you have a few collisions, so the fre typical frequency of the production will be lower. Um, and moreover, there is also uh, the, the important quantity, the fact that not, only, not all the energy uh, involved in, in the bubble can be converted into gravitational waves. Part of it, there is the, the bubble, you have imagined the, the bubble expanding, and here there is the plasma. And so this means that partially you can increase the temperature of the plasma, so you, you lose a bit of energy. Or, uh, for instance, you can uh, generate turbulence. And also turbulence is a different way. Okay? So the, crea the critical quantity is uh, here is uh, mm -hmm, alpha, okay, this quantity. Basically, okay, just to give you an intuition, beta is how fast the potential goes down with temperature. Alpha is what is the energy gap between uh, this, the phase at which the tunnel is going into and the origin, okay? So when alpha is larger, you call it, you say that the transition is super cooled. Fine, and now the spectrum, the prediction of the spectrum. In first approximation, what you expect, okay, these are the, 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 the expressions, but what you, you know is that uh, you expect this kind of signal, okay? This one, this one. Let's say in first approximation, a broken power law. Okay, all these uh, solid lines, black lines, uh, are uh, the prediction of the signal uh, depending on uh, the parameters alpha and beta. Moreover, on the top of this signal, okay, you can have further productions. First, uh, it's the sound wave, and second is the magnetic hydrodynamics. The, the sound wave has an effect of increasing the peak and tilting the beta spectrum. And the, the magnetic hydrodynamics, okay, produce a secondary peak here. And uh, roughly speaking, the point is that uh, it's an effect of the plasma. You imagine that there are, the, the, there are the bubbles expanding, and the bubbles is expanding, but when it moves, it makes turbulence. And this turbulence is also a, a, an energy density that is changing with time. 
so potential reproduction of gravitational waves. Moreover, you have the plasma that is when you are, you have the bubble that is expanding, he's moving like uh, hair in when you, when you, when you speak, okay? So, and the point that the, the, these waves goes on after, also after the collision. So you have the coherent mo motion of the plasma, also this coherent motion of the plasma is uh, an energy density that is changing with time. Okay, so we have the prediction, okay, this kind, of, and now we want to see uh, the following. Okay, what is the typical, yes, thanks. What is the typical uh, uh, frequency of, of the peak of this spectrum? And you can see that uh, it uh, depending on, uh, um, on alpha, sorry, on alpha here is considered larger for practical reasons. Depending on beta, the parameter that was uh, connected uh, to how fast the, the potential goes down with temperature, and the temperature at which the phase transition occurs, you have that the peak of the, 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 the spectrum has uh, different frequencies. In particular, for instance, for uh, a temperature of uh, uh, 10 MeV, you are in the region of SKEA. For a typical temperature of uh, 100 GV, the rate we scale, you are in the region of LISA. If you are at a high temperature, okay, basically 10 to the 6 or maybe 10 to the 4 sphere, uh, you are in the, in the region of LIGO. Concerning the, peak of the, the position of the peak. But moreover, okay, you have also that, as I said, you don't have only the peak, but the spectrum is a broken power law, and the, also the, the broken power law can touch the, the, the sensitivity curve of uh, LIGO or other experiments. So, as you can see here, okay, this is the region of beta and the, 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 the temperature of the phase transition at which LISA is sensitive to. Here you have the case of LIGO and here SKA. And uh, I guess that the, 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 the first talk was discussing also that, but there is an issue. Typically the, the collaborations are considering a, a power law. And here you have a broken power law. So depending on the position of the peak, you cannot immediately apply the constraint. But my, my impression is that, roughly speaking, okay, what you have seen by, uh, by LIGO, the data of the previous talk, are ruling out this area. And uh, what you got from uh, PPTA and nanograph is ruling out this area. In any case, it's an indicative constraint because you should really uh, run the, the analysis with uh, consider that your this pattern is not a power law. Moreover, okay, there is the fact that uh, here you have the letter V phase transition. This is the scale. And the letter V phase transition is particularly motivated because we are sure that uh, there is uh, a Higgs mechanism breaking the SU2 cross U1. So, but in the case of the standard model, this breaking uh, occurs via a crossover. So you don't have formation of bubbles. So, the connection is uh, you, you need to have the, you have the bubbles and therefore the formation of the stochastic background only if the transition is of first order. This means that you need uh, f uh, physics beyond the standard model. In particular, in the case of the V scale, what you have uh, is a new physics at TV scale, which is exactly the scale that is being, probing, uh, being probed at uh, colliders now. So you can see here a plethora of fundamental models. For instance, you have Randall syndrome, and Randall syndrome, you can see that, okay, all these black lines are uh, the prediction of the stochastic background in depending on the parameters of the model. But in any case, you can see that uh, for some lines, uh, you go above the sensitivity curve. Okay. Moreover, you can also have the case of supersymmetry. Also supersymmetry, not in the case of the MSSM, you need some extensions. Uh, you can have uh, a signal that goes above the sensitivity curve. And actually, it goes so above that here, uh, okay, technically speaking, this was not the sensitivity curve of LISA, but it's the uh, power low sensitivity curve. That's, this is the, the difference between one line there. Moreover, you have also composite models. Also in composite models, depending on the bedding, you have that the breaking produces the stochastic background. So again, complementarity with LAC. But, you also have other, uh, other models, basically, that, that are well considered. And you consider the, the, the Lagrange on the standard model, uh, you add uh, higher dimensional operators of dimension six and dimension eight. 
uh, okay, I don't know if uh, I'm, we are speaking about the same languages here, but the point is that you take the standard model of particle physics that is going very well, and you add some perturbations, okay, some new interactions, but very weak interactions, so it's the small interactions. And this is a, a strong way to, to, to put constraint on FHT theory. And in this case, in particular case, you have some, some of, the, of the operators that uh, are very, very weakly constrained by, by LAC. But, for instance, Lisa, this yellow band, then, can, can, can prove the model. And the, the other way to prove this part uh, at colliders is to wait for the next generation of colliders, future sequel colliders, if uh, they will ever happen. Then, uh, the last, uh, I'm finishing, I guess, okay? And the point is that, fine, but uh, typically we, have, uh, we are saying, okay, at this level, in LISA, and I guess also in other collaborations, we are saying, fine, we have a signal, we don't have a signal. But the, the crucial question, at least for me, is also, fine, but if I have a signal, what can I learn? Okay. Because uh, can I understand, for instance, if the signal comes from uh, a phase transition, if it comes from uh, uh, black holes or whatever? And, uh, here, just to sketch, okay, here is, for instance, what you can, uh, how you can reconstruct a signal in LISA, it's a preliminary result. Imagine that we have this input signal, okay, and this yellow band here is uh, how you reconstruct the signal. And something similar is, uh, even if you have a very weird signal, okay, that at all is not a broken power law, okay, you have that, okay, this blue, is the injected signal, and this green is how you reconstruct. Okay, it is better than what I expected. So, conclusions. Uh, of course, gravitational wave experiments are starting the technique physics that have never been tested before. Good, nice. And uh, gravitational, waves, uh, gravitational wave observatories have a big potential to test cosmology, first of phase transitions, and particle physics. LISA is particularly sensitive to electronic scale, but, uh, okay, it's a letter with scale, but we have also models, well motivated, that produce uh, this, this signal. Because, as I said, you need a uh, uh, physics beyond the standard model. And in particular, uh, you know the paper by Cezanne about uh, the multiband uh, astronomy. Okay, here, since uh, you have the, the broken power law, you have a multiband uh, uh, cosmology or particle physics because the signal in some cases can be probed at more detector at the same time. And uh, finally, uh, okay, it's possible to go to, to test and to reconstruct the signal with some accuracy. Thanks. So thank you, Germano. Time for one question. Sorry, but okay. <laughs> no, because I, I have in mind our detectors on Earth, uh, where to do stochastic uh, background searches, uh, we need uh, more detectors uh, and yeah. correlate them. In this case, you have only LISA and a lot of uh, astrophysical, no. yeah, and a lot of background. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know it is stupid, but no, it's, not, <laughs> it stupid. Is not clear uh, Actually, to my me. answer will be a fake answer, and maybe there is a very deep reason that I can explain. But with LISA, you have three uh, satellites, these three detectors. So what you have is, naively, in the first approximation, three interferometers. But one of them is a linear combination of the other two. So wh when you do the connect, okay, and now, so at least we have two LIGO first. And second, then you can do also the SINAC channel. Okay, for that, uh, at least in, at a high frequency, you should be free of, in first approximation, free of, of noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in this way, okay, the first, answer, the first level of the answer is it's not true that we have one detector, we have two, and then, okay, data analysis. But in any case, the, the main problem, in, for general, if uh, you cannot go there and check. So if you, if you have strong glitches, uh, strong, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Problems, okay, it's, uh, it's difficult to understand if uh, it is a stochastic background or a problem of a problem of the detector. But and to make an object to detect in stochastic background, you need to remove uh, other non sources. Huh? Yeah, um, yes, uh, okay, it depends. Because in some cases, you are lucky 
because it's an extreme case, huh? because uh, um, the stochastic, sometimes you are sensitive to a stochastic background that is below the sensitivity curve, okay, because there is the power law you integrate. So in such a case, maybe the signal is a bit cleaner. But in any case, sure, it will be a, a hard task to, to, to disentangle the sources. Okay, thank you. So let's thank Germano again.